Hey guys, and welcome back. And I'm sorry for the video quality, it's not the best that it could be, but the screen recorder for the video I'm doing today, my screen recorder actually does not support iOS 7 beta. So I'm just gonna have to stick with this for now and just do it as well as I can. So the video today is going to be an overview along with pros and cons of iOS 7 beta 1. So let's just go ahead and get started. This is the lock screen of the new iOS 7. And as you can see here, as you move the screen like this, you can see a little 3D effect. As you look at the clock, it looks like it's kind of hovering above the wallpaper here. The wallpaper actually moves in the background as you move your phone. I thought this was a pretty cool feature. It's really nice. I'll go ahead and swipe over. This is the new passcode lock. It looks pretty nice. Go ahead and get into the phone. Uh, these are the new revamped icons, the more flat design, as Apple puts it. I think it's pretty nice looking. A lot of people don't like these icons. I don't think it's that bad. I thought it's pretty nice. They also have a new notification center, which is revamped. Looks a lot cleaner, a lot nicer, and I really like it. It's also got all these different tabs for missed, all, or just today. And as you can see, the App Store actually updates itself now. So you don't have, if that you don't want to worry about going in and updating the apps that need updated, they update automatically if the feature is turned on, which it is by default. I have it turned off because I really don't like that feature very much. So another thing is, yes guys, these apps that I put up on my previous videos, GBA for iOS, NDS for iOS, all of those, they still work on iOS 7, and just to prove it, I'll go ahead and open one up right here, which is Pokemon Emerald running in GBA for iOS. Still works the same exact way, no differences, so you don't have to worry about that. Another cool feature is the new multitasking. It's completely different here. We have all the apps that I have open. To close out, you just simply swipe up. You don't have to just close out of one at once. You can actually go to as many as your fingers can grab. Just swipe them up just like that. Also here, I'm gonna be opening up a few apps just to show you what's new in each app. Now, I'll go ahead and jump into the camera app because this has got a few new cool features. Here is the photo. You can go ahead and swipe over to get to video right here. Or you can go over to Square for like Instagram type pictures, things like that. You can also swipe over and get to Panorama. And overall, it's really nice. Also, one of the big new features of this is there are now quick toggles just like a jailbroken iPhone. So how to get to these is you just swipe up from the bottom here and you have all these cool little quick toggles for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, lock orientation, you can adjust your brightness, you can do all this cool stuff, flashlight app which as you can see here does work. So that's pretty nice as well. Another thing is they did incorporate another jailbreak tweak in here, let's see if I can get it to focus. and. If you guys know about Live Clock, it actually takes your clock icon here and makes it live. So it tells it tells the live time here along with a ticking second hand. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this to focus real well. There we go. As you can see that little red hand moving. So that's pretty nice as well. Another new app in here is the weather app. As you can see, it shows a live kind of view of what it looks like outside. If it's raining, it will be animated with rain. If it's sunny, you'll see sun rays coming through here. Right now, it's pretty dark outside. You've got the moving clouds up here. It's really nice. Another thing is Spotlight Search. You cannot access it by swiping to the right like normal. To get to Spotlight Search, to search through all your stuff, you just simply swipe down 
And this can be done on any page of your home screen. It does not have to be on your first page. They have a new revamped keyboard, which looks really nice. It doesn't always work with all third-party apps as it's still in beta, but that will be fixed in the future. We'll go ahead and show you swiping over to my second page here. And you can get to Spotlight Search that way as well. There's also a brand new music app and a new thing added in here is actually a Pandora type radio function where I've added Eminem radio, Taylor Swift radio, and you can add as many stations as you like in here and actually listen to them and they do work very well. I'm not going to play much of that. It's pretty nice. But overall, I like the new design of iOS 7. I think everything's cool and nice, and I think it looks great. Another thing is there's actually a dedicated FaceTime app instead of it being integrated into the phone here like it was usually. You can go ahead and open that up. Make sure there's no personal information real quick. Okay. And it's not very responsive right now. It is laggy as you can kind of see right there where it's see-through because it actually uses your front-facing camera to put kind of a background image back in here that way you can see yourself in kind of a blurred animation type thing just to make it look a little bit nicer and that whole 3d effect also does work on your springboard as you can see right here it looks kind of like the icons are hovering over the wallpaper so that's pretty nice as well and a couple cons of this iOS 7 is there are still very many bugs and things in here and battery life is not very great at all. The battery life for me, I'll charge it and it'll last about eight hours and that's with not using it, anything like that. I'll leave it, it'll be 100%, I leave it beside my bed to go to sleep. When I wake up, it'll be at about 60% and it drains really fast. Another thing that I found is with Newsstand, it is actually an app now, so it can be put into folders. Also, folders are now unlimited, so you can put as many icons, as many apps in here as you want. You can swipe through them. A Newsstand glitch, you open this once, twice, you press home, and your phone will actually crash. Now, there's actually a few glitches like this that you'll find throughout the thing, but it's just something you'll have to deal with if you want to do a beta version of the firmware. Other new apps that Apple has fixed up and made just look so much better on this iOS firmware is the phone and messages app. In my opinion, I like the way the phone looks. It's got a transparent background here so you can see whatever you have set for your background and it just looks really nice in my opinion. Just go ahead and dial a random number here. And I think it just looks really nice. I'll go ahead and open up the messages app here. And I'll show you a demonstration of what that looks like. It looks a lot flatter. I think it looks a lot better in my personal opinion. You may think differently, but I like it. So we'll just go ahead and swipe over. That's also another gesture they've added when you're in something like the settings. See if I can get into focus here. And you go into something a couple times. You can actually swipe back and get to your previous screen without having to move your finger all the way up here to the top and press that back button. Also one more pretty nice feature is the new Siri. It actually has a more, it's supposed to be more realistic sounding voice. It's not really been integrated into here quite yet. There's a little bit of changes and fixes, but the whole UI of it is completely different and it looks really nice. So I'll go ahead and test that out right here and show you guys that. Hello Siri. So that's Siri for you guys. Looks pretty nice. And when you search the web, you can actually search things like images. It will search the web automatically for you without asking, and it'll keep it in the default Siri app. Show me images of white tigers. All right, here's what I got. Then it'll go ahead and show you the images of the white tigers here. It's pretty nice. It uses Bing to search through this, and you can post up to Twitter. So, that's Siri for you guys on iOS 7. Now, 
I'll just go ahead and switch over to my computer right now and show you guys how to install this if you would like to install it on your phone without a developer's account or without a registered UDID. Alright guys, switching over to my computer now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install iOS 7 without a developer's account or a registered UDID. Now the first thing you're going to want to get is the correct IPS firmware for your phone. I'll have every link in the description below. Also for the iPhone 5, there's going to be two different firmware versions. One for model A1429 and one for A1428. To find this model number to see which one you're on, just look at the back of your iPhone right under where it says iPhone in the big text. It'll say designed by Apple in California, assembled in China, and then you'll see model, and that number right behind it is the one that you want to download. And I'll have both of those posted below. So the first thing you want to do is plug in your phone and open up iTunes. You want to go over here to your phone, you just go ahead and click that. And you want to restore it back to factory, to where it wipes everything. Now once you restore it, you want to go through the activation process on your phone, and once it goes into your home screen, don't touch it and don't go into any more apps, just leave it on that home screen because we're going to need that fresh activation to make it believe that iOS 7 is going to be activated. So right after that finishes, you want to shift click or control click if you're on a Mac, check for update. And then you just scroll down and find your iOS 7 IPA file and you want to just click that and press open. And then you just go ahead and restore that back to there and it will be installed on your phone. It's that simple. And in order to restore back to it, you are, you are going to have to have your original firmware file, which I will have a link to those down in the description as well. So you just want to go back into here and shift click on check for update again and pick the iOS 6 firmware that you have downloaded for your phone and just click open and let it go through that whole process. And then after that guys, you're good. You should be on iOS 7 and there should be no issues with this. If you have any issues, go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below. I'll try to help you as much as possible. So that's the video for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, guys.